G'day guys. Today I'm going to try and get Proxmox installed and working on this Lenovo IdeaPad 330S-14iKB. It currently only has 4GB of soldered DDR4 RAM and the 1TB mechanical hard drive, but I have ordered an extra 16GB stick of RAM for slot 2, as well as a 256GB M.2 SSD. Unfortunately, neither have arrived yet. This laptop originally came with a 16GB Intel Optane SSD, which turned out to be the cause of all of the issues I have been experiencing on this laptop. For some reason, it was causing the CPU to throttle down to 400 megahertz when in Windows, which is incredibly slow, and it was causing extreme system instabilities in Linux. As soon as I removed it, everything came good. One big hurdle we have to overcome is the lack of internal ethernet on this laptop. I did waste a few days trying to get this cheap USB ethernet adapter to play nicely with it, and although it worked out of the box when installing Proxmox, as soon as I tried to create a virtual ethernet adapter inside of VM, the cheap little USB ethernet adapter did stop responding, so I was no longer able to connect to my server, and I did have to do a full reboot. It turns out it was just that ethernet adapter specifically, and this other really cheap AliExpress one that I picked up at the same time works perfectly, even when creating virtual ethernet adapters for VMs. We'll be using this one today. I've also just downloaded and written the Proxmox installer image to this cheap Lexa 8GB USB flash drive. I will note, it was incredibly difficult trying to download the Proxmox installer over HTTP from their website. The download started off fine, but it would always stop and fail around 100 meg, even if I used a download manager. I ended up just using the torrent instead. I've connected the USB Ethernet adapter along with an Ethernet cable, as well as the USB Proxmox installer and I've just mashed F2 on the keyboard when powering it on to get to BIOS. You can see this is the 8th gen Intel i3 8130U CPU. It's not amazing by any means, but it should be more than enough to have a play around with Proxmox. We'll just go across to boot and make sure our Lexar flash drive is number one. There we go. You might notice I've already got Proxmox installed on this hard drive, but we'll wipe it and start again anyway. Go across to exit and save changes. There we go, we're on the Proxmox page. Just press enter for graphical install. I'm not a Proxmox expert by any means, so this video isn't intended to be a guide, but more of a video on what I've learned when trying to install it to this laptop. Let's go down to Agree. My trackpad does work out of the box, so that's nice. Just selecting the only drive that's in here, the one terabyte mechanical. We don't want to press Options, we'll leave it as Stock, and press Next. I'm going to change the country to Australia. It's got to set up the time zone, so Australia and New South Wales. I'll just create a password. It does need to meet the minimum criteria. Unfortunately, it also requires an email. This is more for alerts. Leaving it blank or the default does give you an error and it won't let you continue. So I usually just delete invalid and put dot test. I sure hope no one out there has the mail at example dot test mailbox. Go next. I'll leave the host name as default. I want to set my static IP. I'll put it to 52 for now. And I'll leave the gateway and DNS as standard. Go next. Everything looks good. And I'll click install. Just be aware this will wipe everything on the hard drive. On one of my first tests, I did try installing this to an old 16 gig SSD I had laying around. And although it did install, it did have a lot of issues just because it didn't create any LVs and a lot of the settings were non-standard. It unfortunately took me far longer than it should have to realize what the issue was. Once I installed it to this one terabyte drive, all of those issues did go away. Ideally, I would recommend at least a 64 or 128 gig drive, if not larger, as this will be the default drive where you store your ISOs as well as where your virtual hard drives for your VMs will be stored. As mentioned, I ended up ordering a 256 gig M.2 SSD, which I think should be more than enough just for messing around. Looks like it's just finishing installing Grub. It's finally finished. It says it'll reboot in one second. Don't yank out your flash drive until it's turned off. So now it's off, we'll yank it out. Here's our Grub menu. You can press enter, or if you just wait a few seconds, it will default to the first entry. And it's finished booting. So Proxmox is now running in the background. On another PC, we'll just enter the IP followed by port 8006 into something like Chrome. And from there, we can manage our Proxmox server. You can also log in locally. So username root, and then the password you set up during the install. And you can see we are at the shell. This isn't really used to create or manage your VMs, but more so to change local config, like the network settings. Since you do manage it remotely, this is why you need an ethernet port. So we had to use a USB ethernet adapter. During the Proxmox install, it does let you select a wireless card, but it doesn't actually ask you for the SSID or password. So if you did want to use Wi-Fi on this, you would select the wireless card, it would finish installing, you'd get to this screen, you'd log in locally like we have here, and then you would just change the network settings on your device, adding the SSID and password. As far as I know, most, if not all wireless cards won't support bridge mode. So while you can access your Proxmox server directly over Wi-Fi, 
To do things like manage and create VMs, you won't actually be able to create any virtual network adapters for the VMs themselves. So not really handy for a server. Another thing worth mentioning is Proxmox isn't really designed to be installed onto a laptop. So once it's up and running, like it is here, the screen does stay on permanently. This is obviously not ideal since A, it's using more power and B, it might burn an image into your screen. Also, if you close the laptop lid, it will put the laptop to sleep. We will go over a workaround we found to fix this later on. For now, I'm just going to leave this laptop on with a lid open and I'll move over to our regular Windows 10 laptop. So we're over on our normal Windows 10 laptop now, just got into Chrome and we want to type in our Proxmox server's IP. So for me, it was 192.168.1.52. It does tell you on the server itself and we want to use port 8006. So just put a colon 8006 after the IP. It should look something like that. We'll just press enter. You should get this warning just saying that the security certificate has uh, expired or it's invalid. Click on advanced and click proceed anyway. So here is our Proxmox login screen. So the default username is root, R-O-O-T, and the password is whatever you set up during the install. Leave everything else as default. You can click save username if you want just to make it easier for next time and click login. Straight away, it'll say you don't have a valid subscription. Just click OK and we're in. We'll start off by removing enterprise repos. On the left hand side, click on PVE and then in this little middle bar, go down to repositories just under updates. Click on the first enterprise one and click disable. Click on the second enterprise one, click disable. And finally, I wanna click add, click okay. Click on repository and I wanna go down to no subscription. Click add again. And then from here, we wanna go down to updates, which is just above repositories. Click refresh, a little window should pop up. I'll go click okay first. Wait for it to update all the repos. Doesn't take too long. You'll know it's finished when the download button is no longer grayed out. It should also say task okay at the very bottom of the little pop-up. We can close this off. And I want to click upgrade, which should update pretty much everything. A little shell window should pop up and we want to click yes when prompted. It wants to download about 400 meg and install around 600 meg. So let's press yes. And now we'll just wait for it to finish. On an SSD, it doesn't take too long, but on this old mechanical drive, it does take around five or 10 minutes. All right, so all the updates are finished now. We can close off the little shell window, click leave. I think next we'll try and get the laptop screen to turn off and also make it do nothing when we shut the lid. We will need to reopen the shell for that. So you've got two options. You can use the built-in shell. So you can click shell down here or you can click shell up here and it pops out. Or the method I prefer is to use a third party program, something like Putty, since it does make it a lot easier to copy and paste stuff in and out of it. We'll close off the little shell window again, open up a new tab and type in Putty, P-U-T-T-Y. It's the top link, putty.org and click download Putty, nice and easy. I don't want to install it, so I'll just scroll down. I just want the portable 64-bit x86 version. So I'll just click on putty.exe and it should download it. There we go, done. Let's click on it to run it. So this is Putty. If you haven't used it before, it's very straightforward. Where it says hostname or IP address, it is the default box. When you open it, you just want to type in your server's IP. So again, for me, 192.168.1.52. Leave everything else as default, including the port, and just click open. It'll ask if you want to accept it. Click accept. And we want to log in. So again, username is root. And the password is the password that you set when you set up Proxmox. We can close off the putty tab if we want to. And I might make this full screen. So we'll start by disabling sleep mode when you close the lid. We'll just type in nano space slash etc slash systemd slash login.conf. Press enter. Here's our config file. So we'll use the arrow keys, go down a whole bunch. And on the line where it says handle lid switch equals suspend, at the very start of it, just press the delete key once to remove the comment. I also want to do the same for external power and dot. So all three of the lid switches. Go to the very end of all three of them, make sure they say equals ignore. So dot is fine. External power, we have to change that. So just press backspace, change that to ignore. And the top one, again, says suspend. We want to change that to ignore as well. If we go down a little bit more, we can see idle action equals ignore. We want to uncomment that. So go to the very start, press delete to get rid of the hash or crunch. It should turn white. And you shouldn't have to change idle action below it, but we'll change it anyway, uncomment it, and change it from 30 min to just zero. So once you've changed those five lines, hold down control and press O for output. Press enter to keep the default name. Hold down control once more and press X to exit. All we have to do now is reset system D login D for it to take effect. So we'll just do system CTL space restart space system D dash login D press enter. So now we should be able to close the laptop lid safely. Keep in mind the backlight and the screen will both stay on even if the lid's closed. So let's try fix that next. We want to edit grub config. So nano slash etc slash default slash grub. Go down to where it says 
grub command line default equals quiet. I want to go to the very end of that. Inside the quotations, but after quiet, press space and type in console blank, one word, equals. And then how long you want to wait until the screen turns off in seconds. You could change it to something small like one or five. So it pretty much turns off instantly. But if for some reason you do have to work on the laptop itself, maybe fix the network settings at some point, it is extremely frustrating. So I would recommend something like 30. Just make sure it looks like mine. And once again, hold down control and press O, press enter, that saves it. And press control and X to quit. Finally, we just want to update grub. So type in update dash grub, press enter. Hopefully there's no errors. And all we have to do now is reboot the Proxmox server for the changes to take effect. So we can just type in reboot, all one word, press enter. Putty will disconnect, that's fine. I'll move back over to our server laptop so we can see if it worked. So this is our Proxmox server now. It's just finishing off the reboot. We're on the login screen and you can see it has turned off. The system is still running though. If we press anything on the keyboard, the screen should turn back on. So I'll press R for root and it does turn back on. If we wait another 30 seconds, it will turn back off and it's off. We'll close the lid, move this out the way and go back to our Windows laptop. So we're back on our regular Windows laptop. We'll click OK on the PuTTY error. And since our server is running again, at the very top left of PuTTY, click on the title bar where it says PuTTY itself is right click, go down to restart session and it should ask you to log back in. So again, root and your password. We'll minimize PuTTY for now and go back to our Proxmox front end. It should automatically reconnect. We'll just click on summary to make sure. And yep, it has reconnected. So now we've got everything set up how we want it. Let's quickly download an ISO and spin up a quick VM to make sure everything works. So I think a good small distro to test would be Slytaz Linux. So let's open a new tab, type in Slytaz 4.0 download, go to the mirrors. I want the standard edition. So I'll just right click on it. I'll go copy link address. Now we can either go back to our Proxmox web front end and go through shell, but I much prefer putty. So I go to putty. Now from here, we want to navigate to our default ISO folder. So we'll just type in cd slash var slash lib slash bz slash template slash iso. Type in ls, should be empty, it is. So we'll just pull the slide has iso from the website. Just using wget and I'll paste the download link. You can just right click in putty, press enter, should start downloading and it is. The iso is only around 40 meg in size. So it's a good little distro for testing. So it's finished downloading, type in ls once more just to make sure it's there and it is. We'll minimize putty once more and go back to our web front end. So to create a VM at the very top right, you can just click create VM. If you have multiple clusters, make sure you select the correct one on the left, but we only have one PVE and it is selected. So that's fine. Click create VM. We'll leave the node as default. There is no resource pool, so we'll leave that as well. Leave the VM ID. We'll give it a name. We'll call it test. You can call it whatever you want. You can either press next or just click OS. Now under ISO image, click a little drop down. select our ISO. Slide has. The guest OS is Linux, so we'll leave that. Leave everything else default. Storage is local. Go across the system or press next. Where it says graphics card, I have had issues using the default with Slide has, so I always use standard VGA. For something like Windows, default's fine. I'll leave everything else the same. Go across to disks. I don't actually want to create a hard disk, so I'll just delete. If you change your mind, you can always press add. Go across the CPU. I'll leave all that default, one core, one socket, that's fine. Go across to memory. We've only got four gig of RAM currently. Slytaz has a very low footprint, so we'll change it to something a bit smaller, maybe 1024, which is still pretty overkill for Slytaz. Go across the network. So this is where I got stuck using the other USB Ethernet adapter. Every time I would create a network bridge, it would uh, lock up. Also, as mentioned earlier, if you're using a wireless network card, you most likely won't be able to create a network bridge either. Under model, I'll change it to something like E1000, since this is a very old Linux distro. It is slower than Vert.io, but it doesn't matter too much for testing. Go across to confirm, make sure everything's correct, which it is, and click finished. After a second or two, our VM should pop up on the left-hand side. There it is there, 100 test, let's click on it. So here's our VM. We can change the hardware by clicking on hardware. If you wanna change the ethernet adapter, just double click on it and change it to whatever you want. I'm happy with that. So we'll go across to console and we'll click start now. Got a little Proxmox splash screen and we're in Slytaz boot menu. So press enter. We'll select our country and language and we're on the Slytaz desktop. If you click the little arrow on the left, we can go full screen. Makes it a bit easier to see. I'll just open up Slytaz terminal. This is inside the VM and we'll see if our internet works. We'll do ping 8.8.8.8. .8 and yep, we do have internet. You can shut down your VM a few ways. You can do it the normal way. So shut down the OS like you would normally on a real PC. So shut down system, or you can click the power button on the little uh, sidebar. You can go shut down, which sends it the shutdown command. Basically the same as pressing the power button on the front of a real PC, or you can go hard stop, which actually kills the VM. I guess that's the equivalent of unplugging a computer from the wall. 
We'll do hard stop since it is just uh, running in RAM. Click OK. And it's finished. Now, what if you wanted to copy files over to your Proxmox server from a different PC? Earlier, we used wget to download our SlightAS ISO. So I think next we'll use SFTP to transfer files from this Windows PC here over to the server. I like to use FileZilla. So let's open up a new tab, type in FileZilla. There we go, top link. You can just click download FileZilla, but for some reason this never works for me. So I'll just go to download on the left. And I don't want the installer. I want the portable version, so show additional downloads and I'll grab the 64-bit zip. Once it's finished downloading, we'll open up our downloads folder and we'll just extract the FileZilla zip. Open up the folder and another folder and run FileZilla. So again, this is pretty easy to use. Click on host at the top and we want to type in sftp colon slash slash our server IP. So 192.168.1.52 over under username. Type in the username of the server. Again, default, it's root, R-O-O-T. Put your server's password in and under port, type in 22. Click quick connect. I don't like to save passwords just for security. So I'll go don't save, but it's entirely up to you. Click OK and we're connected. So the left hand side is your PC. The right hand side is the server. Now, the main reason you'll be doing this is most likely to copy ISOs over. So let's click on root at the very top. Want to go down to VAR, LIB. Go down to the very bottom, VZ template and ISO. So you can see we've already got our SlyTAS in there, which we did download earlier using wget on the server itself. On the left-hand side, I just want to open up my downloads folder on this laptop. And I've got Windows XP Pro Service Pack 3. I'm just going to drag it over to the server. There we go. At the very bottom, there's a little status bar. You can see 5%, 6%. It's going pretty fast. 6 megasecond. It's not too bad. It's just about finished copying. And it's finished. So we'll close off FileZilla since we are done with it. Close up our downloads. We'll also close off the FileZilla download page. So we're back on our little Proxmox web front end. We'll just double check our ISO did copy over to the server. So under my test VM, let's click on hardware, click on CD DVD drive, double click on it. Under ISO, yep, there's our Windows XP Pro Service Pack 3 32-bit, nice and easy. As you can see, it's not too hard installing and running Proxmox onto a laptop. Even if you don't have a built-in Ethernet port, you can use a cheap little USB Ethernet adapter. Just be aware, not all of them do work for network bridges, but they do only cost a few dollars each, so you could buy a few different ones just to make sure. It's also worth mentioning, if you do plan on turning a laptop into a dedicated Proxmox server that you'll leave on 24-7, I would highly recommend disconnecting the battery since it will very quickly degrade if you leave it plugged in all the time. Once my new SSD and RAM get here, I will do another fresh install of Proxmox and put this laptop to good use. If there's any interest, I could do a follow-up in a few months to see how well it runs 24-7 being left on. I think that'll do it for today. If you have any questions or comments, let me know down below. Otherwise, thanks for watching.